That's enough, Charlie. What did you do that last mile in, Doc? You didn't see any jackrabbits passing, did you? <laughs> Maybe we should have sent him to the Olympic Games instead of his son Lee. Yes. If son Lee win 100 meter swimming race, chest expand two inches more. <laughs> well, as long as it's your chest and not your waistline, it's all right. Show him how you can touch the floor with your fingers, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> well, you're all right until next year's physical examination, Charlie. You won't be retired this year. Hello. Who's going fishing? Charlie, I'm lending him my tackle. Do you know what this is? Sure. Well, that's a Waikiki spinner. See, that's a beauty, eh? But he'll lead a good heavy line with that. What do you think he's going fishing for, whales? What he needs is a light silk line. Oh, you're talking through your hat. What, what line do you prefer, Charlie? Oh, just a piece of string with a hook on one end, optimist on other. It's <laughs> a good combination of that. Eh? But honorable chief recommend latest scientific implement to catch unwary fish. Well, good luck to you, but I know you'll get them, even if you have to bring them in with handcuffs. Thank you so much, but uh, this time, fish hunt, not man hunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, boy. Goodbye. Hey, Pop! Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I thought my Pop was alone. How to do, Mr. Scott? Well, son, what are you all steamed up about? Junior son Charlie, most anxious to start on fishing trip. Yeah, and I bought a book on how to catch them. The Fisherman's Guide. Good idea. If don't catch fish, book provide excellent fish story. Oh, we'll catch them all right. Gee, that's well tackled. Look at it sparkle. Good fishermen, like clever merchant, no lure of bright colors. But suppose the fish are colorblind. <laughs> Answer that, Charlie. Well, in that case, perhaps guidebook give a dress of good fish market. But anyone could tell a starfish because it hasn't got the marks of a barb took in its mouth. Fear number two son, like older brother Lee, develops symptoms of detective. I can't beat Lee at detecting right now. Gee, look at that big new plane up there. That's the Hopkins ship. They're making a test flight for the government, demonstrating a new way of handling a plane by remote radio control. Oh, I know. Like they do with battleships, so they can send them out to fight without any men on board. Would be greatest blessing if all war fought with machinery instead of human beings. Hello, hello. 3,000 altitude. Shall I switch over to radio control? No, wait for instructions. I believe, Colonel, if we keep the plane inside of the field in the preliminary tests, it'll be better for observation. That's a good idea, Mr. Cartwright. Unfortunately, Masters, my regular test pilot injured his shoulder this morning. We had to substitute Edwards, who's not so familiar with the robot. What is the operating radius of the device, Mr. Hopkins? That's undetermined. In previous inventions, transmission of the radio control wave was affected by static. But in Mr. Cartwright's device, we've successfully overcome that, and we can direct the plane over a charted course as long as the motors function. Well, it sounds all right. That's why I'm putting all my resources back of it, Commander. I believe in it, and I know what a powerful weapon it would be in the hands of an enemy. That's why I want our government to control it. Are you ready, Mr. Cartwright? Ready. Hello? Hello, Edward. Switch over. OK. She's on, sir. The plane is now under radio control from the board here. Have you any special test in mind, Colonel? Take it to 6,000 feet and bank while climbing. Yes, sir. Look at that plane climb! It's probably under radio control now. Remarkable achievement of science. Body perform work while brain detached. I'm sure glad you can't go fishing by radio. Huh? <laughs> Gentle hint. Come on. How's she riding? Smooth as silk, Mr. Cartwright. There's a strong wind drift from the south, but stabilization is perfect. Why, Dick, what are you doing here? I, I've been watching that plane because I thought you were up there flying it. No, I knocked my shoulder out this morning, and I didn't want to risk anything going wrong in the government test, so I bowed out. 
But everything will go off all right, I guess. I hope so. Hello, Edwards. Watch yourself. Power dive. Okay, let her go. She's heading out to sea. Bring her back. She's out of my control. The plane isn't out of the pilot's control. Order Edwards to return immediately. Hello, hello, Edwards. Edwards. Hello. The phone's dead. We are deliberately making off with the plane. Get out another ship and take after him. Hello. This is Mr. Hughes. Oh, Pan American Airways. Yes, I'll use my reservation on tomorrow's clipper for San Francisco. Thank you. Calling all United States and commercial craft in Hawaiian waters. Watch for monoplane number NC203R. Report immediately any information to Pearl Harbor Naval Base. News flash. No trace yet of the plane which vanished mysteriously 48 hours ago. Were plane and pilot swallowed by the sea, or is their disappearance a part of a daring spy plot? Government agencies are making every effort to solve the riddle and expect to have an answer at any moment. More later. Gee, Pop, they're having as hard a time fighting that plane as we are getting fish. Fish in sea like flea on dog. Always present, but difficult to catch. Maybe we'll have better luck here. I'll take a look around. NC 203R, undoubtedly missing plane. Run to nearest telephone and notify authorities. Okay, Pop. Come in a minute, gentlemen. There's our answer. Deliberate theft. The ordinary mechanism is intact, but the most important part of the device, the heart of the robot, is missing. And so is the pilot. Yes, with an invention any foreign power would pay millions to get. Instrument could be duplicated without aid of original plan? Easily, by taking it apart and copying it. Edwards knew that. That's why he stole it. Well, he certainly took a long chance setting the plane down here on the edge of the water. Oh, no, he didn't. Tell them what you found in my fisherman's guidebook, Pop. Fisherman's guidebook show lowest tide of season was Tuesday at 11 a.m. Half hour earlier, same day, plane disappeared from Honolulu. With tide out, hard sand beach make excellent landing field. But unless there was an accident in landing, how do you account for the fire? Evidence that device was carefully removed proved fire started later. Pilot Edwards wear flying suit while testing plane? No, just flannel shirt and trousers. Here, Pop. Tell him about the zipper we found. Long zipper of type used on flying suit. Suggest that plane have other passenger besides test pilot Edwards. That's impossible. The plane was inspected before it left the field. No one besides Edwards could have been aboard. I'm no detective, but it's apparent to me the pilot stole the device and tried to burn the plane to cover the theft. He's right. The man we want is Edwards. In nearby lagoon, have already located murdered body of unfortunate pilot Edwards. Gee, Pop, you never told me that. The idea is ridiculous. No one could possibly have hidden aboard the plane. I inspected it myself just before it took off. There you are, Charlie. How soon before, please? Not more than five minutes. 
Any workmen in vicinity? A few. Possible then for man to hide in plain after inspection? Yes, it would be. But I'll soon find out. I'll check every man that was on the field at the time. Would you like to question them yourself, Mr. Chen? Not necessary. May I examine time cards, please? Certainly. I'm the lost to understand this. All our mechanics were brought here from the mainland. They're old and trusted employees. Were they all here on the morning of the test? No, only the ground crew. The installation was complete, and I gave the shop force the day off. Most strange. What is it, Charlie? Note. Stamp of Monday night on time cards, light ink. But stamp of Tuesday morning in heavy ink. Well, there's nothing strange about that. The timekeeper must have changed the ribbon. Quite correct. But notice peculiar circumstance. Here is card of one man who finished work on Monday night, yet stamped with heavy ink of Tuesday. So it is. That proves this fellow stamped his card Tuesday, or somebody did it for him. Also, could establish alibi for men who remain on field Monday night to conceal himself in test plane. Whose card is that? Name, Miller. Address, Tropic Hotel. You're sure Miller didn't sleep here Monday night? I know he didn't, but he was here Tuesday, and that's the last I heard from him. Disturb nothing, please. Mr. Miller, have lady visitor Tuesday evening? I should say not. I don't stand for carrying on my house. Very commendable precaution, but observe. Hairs from white fox fur indicate fashionable lady visitors sit here while talking with someone opposite. Well, no woman came in here without me knowing it. Evident bird of fine plumage escapes sharp eye of eagle. You say you saw Miller on Tuesday night? I didn't say I saw him, and I knew he was in. I put a telephone call through for him to the Royal Hawaiian Hotel about 8 o'clock. Who was called to? I don't listen in on my guest telephone conversations. Unfortunate not to break rule on this occasion. Anyone connected with the aviation company live at the Royal Hawaiian? I do. Cartwright does, and so does Masters. Masters? Isn't that the pilot with the injured shoulder who was supposed to fly the test? Yes. Presence of wine glasses suggest hospitality offered to lady of white fox fur. But not used. And no wine visible. I don't allow drinking either. Excellent reason to conceal forbidden fruit. Perhaps in closet. <coughs> Miller. Unfortunately, dead. And that telephone call to the Royal Hawaiian involves either Hopkins, Cartwright, or Masters. What about the gal, the one with the white fox fur? One more crack and very bright junior son, walk home. Excuse me, Pop. Well, whoever murdered Miller stole the invention to peddle to some foreign government. Quite correct. But Honolulu make very poor market. We'll check every ship that's put out of here since 8 o'clock Tuesday night. Perhaps murderer make more speedy exit. Use flying ship to reach mainland. The clipper left here Wednesday at 2 o'clock, the day after the device was stolen. Pan American office. Okay, Chief. Here's the passenger list. Richard Masters. Is that the Masters connected with the Hopkins Aviation Company? Yes, it is. Recall if Mr. Masters arrived at dock alone? No, he came in our car from the Royal Hawaiian Hotel with a lady. Notice? Only one lady on passenger list, Miss Yvonne Rowland. Wear white fox fur? Yes, she did. Police headquarters. May not be too late to check on them at the other end. Hello, Chief Scott speaking. Contact San Francisco police and ask for a tracer on Richard Masters and Yvonne Rowland. Arrived on yesterday's clipper. Hey, Pop! White fox fur! Now positively walk home. 
There's nothing suspicious about Masters leaving on the Clipper. He's a member of the American Olympic team, and he had to fly back to the mainland and try to make connections with his boat from New York to Germany. Well, that seems to alibi Masters. Then the call Miller made to the Royal Hawaiian at 8 o'clock Tuesday night must have been to the woman. At 8 o'clock Tuesday night, Miller called me. What about? His return ticket to Los Angeles. Our workmen are leaving on the boat tomorrow. I asked Mr. Hopkins to send the ticket to his hotel. Quite correct. Pound same in uh, Mr. Miller's mailbox. Well, here, look at this passenger list. See if you recognize any of these names. Yes, here's one. Now I know who's guilty of these crimes. Who? Arthur Hughes. He's a notorious filibuster who's made a fortune selling arms to revolutionists in every part of the world. From the time he learned I had Cartwright's invention, he's been after me to sell it to him. If I'd known he followed me to Honolulu, I'd have suspected him at once. Charlie, see if you can get any information on this fellow Hughes. Have already investigated all passengers on Clipper. For past two weeks, Mr. Hughes guessed at Royal Hawaiian Hotel. Well, that's funny, Mr. Hopkins. You both have been living at the same hotel, and yet you didn't know he was in Honolulu. Whether you believe it or not, I didn't. Excuse, please. Truth, like football, receive many kicks before reaching goal. Wouldn't it be advisable to trace Hughes immediately? Well, that's up to Mr. Scott. We're leaving on tomorrow's clipper. And I'll put the matter in the hands of the San Francisco police. Coming, Cartwright? Thank you, gentlemen, for the help you've given us. I'm not so sure the guilty man isn't walking out of that door right now. His story about Hughes was altogether too pat. KGPD coming in. Hello? San Francisco on the air, Chief. Send it through. San Francisco Police reporting tracer on Richard Masters and Yvonne Rowland both left Oakland Airport 9.30 Thursday morning on transcontinental plane for New York regarding later request on Arthur Hughes. This passenger removed to emergency hospital under influence of powerful drug, recovered sufficiently to leave hospital in two hours. Destination is yet unknown. That is all. How did that Hughes information happen to come through? Took liberty of requesting the same. Yes, sir? Contact New York for follow-up on Masters and the Roland woman. Get a tracer on Hughes. Mr. Hughes now become mysterious needle in hay pile. Honolulu calling San Francisco police. I'll follow up on that clipper tracer. Lady of white fox fur. That is purpose of visit? No, sir. I brought you down and caught up tea and some sandwiches. Oh. Consideration for a paternal stomach most unusually. Yeah. You know, I've been thinking it over, and I've got a theory. Oh. You have theory? Suggest you go home, sleep on same. Meanwhile, advise honorable mother, I'm waiting for important message from New York. Okay, Pop. But I'll bet it's the gal with the white fox fur. <laughs> yes? Here comes the dope on that Honolulu tracer. Get ready to pass it on San Francisco. Yes? They're on the steamship Manhattan. Your work must be intensely interesting. You know, shortwave radio has always fascinated me. Oh, really? We get excellent reception in Honolulu. Oh, I pick up the islands on the shortwave sometimes. Oh, I wonder... <laughs> but, but you're so busy. Oh, no, not at all. In fact, well, I, I mean, not right now, anyway. Come on in, and I'll see if I can get something for you. Two minutes of nine. San Francisco coming in. San Francisco police reporting tracer from New York on Masters and Roland. Here's something now. San Francisco police talking to Honolulu. Boat sailed on steamship Manhattan for Berlin. Boat left New York 11 o'clock tonight. Regarding other inquiry, Arthur Hughes had reservation on same vessel but missed sailing. Followed in tug to Sandy Hook and boarded ship there. That is all. 
Oh, that was marvelous. Just as clear as we get it at home. Thank you. Oh, that's all right, Miss Rowland. It's a pleasure. Oh, you're so nice. Good night. Good night. Come in again. Hughes, Yvonne Rowland, and Masters. All on the steamship Manhattan. Say, that's the boat your son Lee's on, the one that's taking the American Olympic team to Berlin. The same. Berlin now attract many foreign visitors, offer excellent opportunity for spies of all countries to operate without suspicion. And that's the very place the thief could easily dispose of the robot. Charlie, Lee is going to meet his pop in Berlin. Well, aren't you surprised? Suspected same. <laughs> Have already sent note in tea basket for honorable wife to pack traveling bag. Well, they've got a big start on you. Their boat docks in Hamburg in seven days. Race not always won by man who start first. Please. We'll leave tomorrow in company with Hopkins and Cartwright on Clipper. Hono Lulu, 18 hours to mainland, then transcontinental plane from San Francisco, 13 hours across country to New York. Take Zeppelin Hindenburg from Lakehurst, New Jersey, across Atlantic Ocean to Friedrichshaven, 61 hours. It's fortunate we haven't been delayed. We'll be on the dock in Hamburg when the Manhattan arrives. I still think we should have radioed the steamship to have their baggage searched. A good hunter never warned Tiger of trap. Oh, observe below, steamship Manhattan. Boy, is that some sauce. Uh, that thing really travels fast, too. How many people does it carry? How should I know? Gee, would I like a ride in that? Why didn't they send us over in it? Huh, there's no second class on an airship. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, excuse me, Betty. Oh, that's all right, Lee. As my pop would say, man who stretched neck looking up, very apt to break neck falling down or something like that. <laughs> Have you seen Dick Masters? Well, I... Oh, he must be somewhere around. Now, don't try to cover up. I know, he's with Miss Rowland, isn't he? Now, Betty, don't you worry about that. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> don't think I'm jealous, only... I'd like to throw that slinky brunette overboard. I wouldn't have said anything if you hadn't mentioned it, Betty. But I've got a theory about that woman. She's an adventurous. What? Come over here. You know, I'm a pretty good detective, and I observe things. Well, there's another fellow on the boat watches everything she does, especially when she's with Dick. What for? Well, I have a theory on that, too. As my pop would say, when a woman play with fire, man get burned. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> well, what are you two conspiring about? Oh, hello, Dick. Fancy meeting you here. Hadn't you noticed I was on the boat? Occasionally. Well, I suppose I have been monopolizing Dick's company, but I am so interested in all you athletes. Radiogram for you, Miss Rowland. Oh, thank you. Will you excuse me? Would you mind posing for a photo, Mr. Masters? I am so interested in all you big athletes. Ah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, that's well. Hold it. Say, let me carry that for you. Oh. <laughs> Say, Betty, how's chance of taking our picture? Come on, gang, let's all get in on Hey, Charlie. Come on, Francis. Want your picture taken? Come on, get on. Hey. Be careful, honey. Hey. Oh. Hey. Hurry up, oh. Betty. Stay oh. <laughs> oh, let me have a picture of all of you. Really, I'd oh, rather... please, I'd love to have one. Go on. <laughs> no, back a little further, please. Thanks, Victoria. How's that? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'll be right back. Betty, I'll have the films developed for you this afternoon. Well, never mind, I'll do it. Oh, but I want some extra prints, dear. It'd be no trouble, really. I'll see you later, Dick. Well, we better clean up for lunch. Am I having lunch with you and Miss Rowland? No, you're lunching with me alone, you pest. Oh! <laughs> 
Meet you in five minutes. Betty. I was right. She is an adventuress. She has a husband. Look. Where did you get this? That fella, he was swiped it out of her book, and I got it from him. I'll bet he's her husband's private detective, getting evidence for a divorce. If she gets Dick in trouble, I'll tear her apart. I think I'll do it right now. Wait a minute, Betty. As my pop would say, sugar, catch more flies than hamburger steak. <laughs> or something like that. But you stick with him. Don't leave Dick alone with her for a second. That Roland gal's going to think I'm her Siamese twin. And leave everything else to me. Right. Most excellent view of stadium for Olympic Games. Very interesting, but I'm more concerned with the business that brought us here. Useless to sprinkle salt on tail of time. Must wait until Manhattan dock tomorrow. We received your radio at sea last night, Inspector Strasser. No one has yet gone ashore. The three passengers you mentioned have been carefully watched. Has any baggage been taken ashore? Nothing yet, sir. Been waiting for you to release it. Mr. Cartwright is standing by at customs to identify the device. Exactly. You see, Mr. Shan, German methods are very thorough. I have greatest admiration for well-known efficiency. I suggest we interview Miss Rowland immediately. Yes, sir. Miss Rowland in her room? Yes, sir. Recommend use of key. Looks as though the Roland woman met the same fate as Miller. It is forbidden to touch anything. Shut the door. When was Lady last seen? when she came from the deck to her stateroom, shortly before midnight. Stewart has been on guard ever since. Anyone visit room? No, sir. No one has come in or out since I've been on duty. Then someone was waiting here when she entered. Did you hear any unusual noise? No, sir. Then he must have made very short work of her. And this is probably the weapon he used. The dent was caused by a heavy blow. And that clock establishes the time when the crime was committed. At precisely 17 minutes after 12. Excuse me, sir. I was near the door then, and I didn't hear anything. You were probably asleep. That's enough. You can go. May I examine, please? Certainly. What was the location of the ship at 17 minutes after 12? About 20 miles off the mouth of the Elbow River. We were proceeding slowly in a heavy fog. Exactly. Conditions were perfect for the murderer to dispose of the body. You see, the porthole is still open. He then searched the room, found the stolen object, and escaped without detection. The perfect reconstruction, Inspector Strasser. Exactly. Well, I beg your pardon. I, I thought this was Miss Rowland's cabin. Hughes! Well, this is a surprise. I never expected to meet you here, Hopkins. There's the man we want. The woman was his accomplice. And when he thought they had the device safely in Germany, he murdered her, the same as he did Miller. That's a very neat plot. It suggests an author's perfect knowledge of events. When were you in the stateroom last? I'm sorry, but I've never enjoyed the privilege of Miss Rowland's intimate company. Then explain, please, the importance of recovering Cigarette lighter from table? Oh, I did that rather awkwardly, didn't I? But I'm sure I can explain it. I was on deck last night with Miss Rowland. I offered my lighter for a cigarette. She failed to return it, and I dropped in to pick it up. But well, you must think we're all fools. I'm not acquainted with the other gentlemen. I demand his arrest. Pardon, please. No occasion for arrest. What do you mean? Sorry to explode theory of brother officer. But no evidence of murder here. One moment, please. Observe. 
dent in watercraft, fit round knob on post of bed. So, no, please, varnish chipped on same. Exactly. Also took liberty to examine fingerprints on neck of bottle. Match lady's fingerprint on glass top of dresser perfectly. Mr. Chen, this is extraordinary. But I have the solution. The woman arranged all this herself so she could get ashore with a stolen device and escape pursuit. Congratulations, Herr Inspector. We'll have her in custody in 24 hours. Well, since you have no further need for me, I'll... No, you don't. I want this fellow's baggage searched. You're overplaying your hand, Hopkins. But if the police wish it, I shan't object. Exactly. And I'll arrange for the release of the other passengers and baggage. Can join you on dock later. doing here? Please explain first. Most unceremonious entrance. I was going to make an investigation here. I came over the rails. No one could see me. Still playing tricks of detective? Yeah, I'm hot on a case. You see, the woman who has this cabin is an adventuress, and she's got a husband, and he's got a private detective named Hughes on this boat watching her. Now she's trying to hook Dick Masters, and Betty, that stick sweetheart, is all upset about it. So I said I'd straighten it out. Suspect recent activities of swimming cause water on brain. No siree. I tell you, this is a real thing. There isn't a murder yet, but I'm sure glad you're here. You can help me. Take a look at this radiogram her husband sent her. Hey, what's happened here? Object of hot case make mysterious disappearance. Don't worry, Pop. With you helping me, I'll find her. Look, here's a swell clue for white fox fur. Have heard enough of white fox fur. Gee, Pop, why didn't you radio me what was going on? I could have had the case closed by the time you got here. Modesty most commendable. Well, you and I could have handled it better than that foreign cop. All Strasser is doing is sitting back there getting Hopkins and Cartwright's life story. At least we got a clue. White fox fur? No, that radiogram. Only thing I can't figure out is where the husband fits in. Suspect husband, like uh, toupee on bald head, used for cover-up. <laughs> Message really very simple. Observe. Read every fourth word. You're followed. Boat waiting. Cuxhaven. Cuxhaven? That must be where she went overboard. And her pals had a boat waiting to pick her up. And she got away with the invention. Most improbable. Lady would risk injury to delicate device by bath in salt water. But what could she do with it? Perhaps accomplice smuggles same ashore. Well, it wasn't Dick Masters, because Strasser searched everything he had. Uh, lady have uh, contact with other athletes? No, only Betty Adams and... Say, I got it. She borrowed Betty's camera and she didn't give it back till last night. Maybe she hid it in there and Betty carried it ashore. Possible. But Betty's on a special train ahead of us with the girls' team. Say, Pop, we gotta do something. If Betty has it, those crooks will be after her. Come in, please. Excuse me, Mr. Chan. I dropped in to thank you for helping me out of that situation this morning. Very happy to be of service. But the situation in your favor that time. It's fair enough. Sit down, please. Thank you. I'd like to repay you by giving you a tip. You'll be much safer if you spend your time in Berlin enjoying the Olympic Games. All play and no work make Charlie Chan very dull policeman. I wonder if you've been smart enough to figure out who killed Miller. Perhaps you have answer? I think the final showdown, you'll ask Mr. Hopkins. Well, I must be going. Help me! 
pleased to release two active number one son. Well, you must pardon my rough tactics, but I saw a rifle barrel in the car driving on the road beside us. Now, humble turn of Charlie Chan to be grateful. Thank you so much. When we meet again, we'll start even. Say, that guy's too smart. He timed the shot almost to a second. But I'm awfully glad he pushed you out of the way of that bullet. Humble parents seem to have a fortunate fate of cat with nine lives. <laughs> I just want you to keep the one you have now. And I'm sticking with you to see that nothing happens. A correction, please. We'll personally deliver you to Uncle Sam at Olympic Village. But Pa... I also have desired to interview Miss Betty Adams to learn if she used camera for picture taking this morning. Gee, that's right. If she did, she discovered the invention in there. Now reveal intelligent mind of good detective. Thanks, Pop. We sure make a swell team, don't we? Hmm. Should have known better. Gosh, I wanted that camera to get some pictures of the game. Gee, this isn't so bad. I think I'll take that bed by the window. Say, I wonder how you ask for a shampoo and a finger wave in German. <laughs> I wonder how you ask for something to eat. It would be better if you girls would see the head matron now to arrange for your seats in the dining hall. That's me. I'm starved. I could eat a 16-pound shot. Well, come on. Oh, um, let's all sit together. I wonder where that dark brown emporium is. One moment, please. May I examine contents of basket? It is nothing. The girl athletes are forbidden candy. I have taken it to report to the matron. We'd be most happy to save you trouble. Hand it over. Will I identify, please? That's it. At last. And it hasn't been tampered with. Uh, it's been a long trail, Mr. Chan. Last step, ease toil of most difficult journey. I'll take it. Recommend immediate delivery to American consul. Life in danger while device in your possession. Well, that's a chance I'll have to take. My responsibility is greater now than it was at home. I'll take personal charge of it. Come away from the window. Look out, the police are here. Who was in that car? Take her away. We'll find out who our accomplices are. I should think that's obvious. The Roland woman was associated with Masters, and the device is found in his sweetheart's luggage. I'll report this to the American Olympic Committee at once. Do you know this fellow, Masters? Why, certainly. He worked for me. Mr. Chan? Your son Lee told me you were here searching my luggage for some, some stolen invention. Yes, and we found it. What? Uh, excuse, please. <laughs> Miss Roland visited your room last night on boat to return camera? Yes, she did. I was packing and she insisted on helping me. And I suppose she hid the robot in your baggage without your knowing anything about it. If that's where you found it, she must have. And you needn't look at me like that. I'm telling you the truth. I think you're trying to protect masters. The authorities will settle that. You won't need the authorities. Dick will settle it himself. Perhaps we've been a little hasty. Hasty accusation, like long shot on horse race. Odds good, but chances doubtful. 
very obvious now why Miss Rowland borrowed camera. Give her excuse to visit stateroom and conceal candy box with device in Miss Betty's luggage. She certainly knew what she was doing. The customs officials hardly looked at the luggage of the Olympic athletes. When I get that matron down to headquarters, she'll tell where a Roland woman is. Very commendable, but must not forget the immediate danger. Power behind Miss Roland will lose no time in attempt to regain most valuable robot. Exactly. And while you remain in Berlin, I'll see to your police protection, Mr. Hopkins. Excellent idea, Inspector. All right, gentlemen, I'll drive you to your hotel. Excuse, please. Prefer to remain at Olympic Village for a visit with Sun Lee. May I use telephone, please? Certainly. Thank you so much. Sure, Mr. Romeo, the lady killer. Just because that banjo-eyed brunette looks at you, go for it like you're trying to break a world record. Oh, forget it, will you, Betty? How did I know what was going on? I only tried to be nice to her. You were. You couldn't have been any sweeter if you'd given her a hacksaw to get out of jail. And if Hopkins goes on making cracks, that's just where we'll be. Well, I told you I'd take care of all that. And you'd better hurry up and see the police about it. All right, I will. But first, I'm going to settle with Hopkins. Dick! Dick, come back! Oh, you big mug. What's the matter? Oh, that poor goof. I told him what Hopkins said, and now he's going after him to knock his block off. That's well, and he can do it. Oh, shut up. I didn't mean that, Lee. But don't you see, if Dick gets into trouble, they'll suspend him from the team. Gee, that's right. And as my pop would say, don't rub sore finger with sandpaper. Oh, we have to stop him. We will, if I have to sock Hopkins myself. Come on. It might have been safer to leave the device in the hotel vault overnight. I'm not trusting anybody. If I'd known when I invented the mechanism that it was going to turn into a Frankenstein, I'd have destroyed it. Well, it's over now. We'll be safely on our way back to America in 24 hours. I hope so. Well, I'll go wash up for dinner. Don't do it, Hopkins. What do you want? Guess. Is that the room on the second floor? Yes. He should be there now. Keep your eye on that window. Be ready to make a fast getaway when he comes out. I'll be in the lobby. Mr. Chan, I want your advice. Yes? I heard an argument in Mr. Hopkins' room, and I was about to go in, when Mr. Hopkins himself let a man out. Who, please? That's it, I don't know. Nobody has entered since I've been here, and I arrived with Mr. Hopkins and Mr. Cartwright. Most mysterious. Perhaps wise to investigate. Assistance, please. It was Hopkins. He escaped through the window. He's got my invention. Uh, notify Inspector Strasser immediately. Yes, sir. I had just left Hopkins alone, so when I heard voices in here, I hurried in. Hughes was accusing Hopkins of deliberately double-crossing his stockholders by stealing my invention to sell it to a foreign government. One moment. We'll corroborate. That's quite true. Continue, please. They quieted down after I came in, but Hughes threatened to expose Hopkins if he didn't cut him in. After Hughes left, I asked Hopkins for an explanation. He ignored me and went over to the desk and started to pack the device in a handbag. I tried to stop him and he drew a gun. I grabbed for it and he tried to shoot me. In the struggle, I was hit on the head. You can't go in there. It's forbidden. Forbidden, my eye. I'm working on this case. I'm Cannon's son. Hello, Pop. I got some valuable information. Go ahead. Just as Betty and I drove up, we saw a man drop out of that window into the garden. 
Two other guys helped him up and they started for a car. I went after them, but one of the guys slugged me and they got away. That settles it. Hopkins will be apprehended immediately. In Berlin, things like this cannot happen. No. By this time, he's probably disposed of the device and is on his way out of town. What's your connection with the Cartwright invention? I tried to buy it from Hopkins, but he wouldn't do business. Then, when it was stolen in Honolulu, I figured that Yvonne Rowland had it. So I followed her. But flying into San Francisco, she outsmarted me. I caught up with her again on the Manhattan. But I didn't get anywhere. She stuck too close to her friend Masters. Wait a minute. Look here, Mr. Chan. I didn't have anything to do with this. That's why I came here tonight. To make Hopkins take back what he said about Betty and me. Yes. I suppose the reason you didn't come up here right away was because you had a date in the lobby with Yvonne Rowland. Yvonne Rowland in this hotel? Dick, is that true? Well, I... Oh! Hey, Betty! Wait! You have explanations to the police. All right, I did see her. But I didn't have any date with her. Just as I came in, she was standing in the lobby. I started after her. I wanted her to face Hopkins to help clear me. Well, she ducked into the floor shop. I followed, but she got away. Then I came up here. And now I'll take care of you for making that crack in front of Betty. Take him out of here. Come here. Uh, get him. Get him. Get him. Mr. Chan, I apologize. It's impossible. Things like this cannot happen in Berlin. successful? Yes, Your Excellency. I received it directly from his hands. Very good. E examine it, Carlos. I hope you have the draft for the price agreed upon, Your Excellency. You'll receive it as soon as the transaction is completed. Before I leave Germany. Yvonne, what is this? He's double-crossed you. Compliments of the Olympic Committee. Very clever. The book must have been substituted at the sports forum. There's only one person clever enough to have done that. Chan, the detective. Our game is with the Oriental now. But when did you get it, Pop? Took opportunity to acquire the same during excitement in girls' dormitory. And no wonder you weren't worried when Hopkins got away. Important lesson for good detective. When all players hold suspicious cards, good idea to have Joker up sleeve. <laughs> well, we got that cleaned up, Pop. Now all we have to do is land the guy that killed Miller and round up this gang of spies. Mr. Chan? Thank you so much. Thank you. What is it, Pop? Envelope, like skin of banana, must be removed to digest contents. Ticket to Olympic Games. And letter. Gee, box 22. That's where all the big shots will sit. Letter, apparently, from Big Noise also. His Excellency, the Honorable Charles Zaraka, requests the pleasure of Mr. Chan's company at the opening of the Olympic Games. Zaraka? You've never met him. I have never met Santa Claus either, yet accept gifts from same. Mr. Chan? 
We haven't met, but I'm sure you've heard of me. Yvonne Roller. I looked forward to making acquaintance before leaving Berlin. This is His Excellency, the Honorable Charles Zaraka. A very great pleasure, Mr. Chair. This is most unexpected compliment to humble policemen. Are you sure that fellow knows his stuff? He's the best in Berlin. He'll read every move of their lips. All right. They're in box 22. spectacle, Mr. Chan. The nations of the world about to struggle for supremacy on the field of sports. Yet behind all this, there is another struggle going on constantly. For world supremacy in a more sinister field. It's not a game for amateurs, Mr. Chan. I hope you get my meaning. Could not be more clear if magnified by 200-inch telescopes then wouldn't it be advisable for you to turn over the Cartwright invention to us and return to your own little game in Honolulu? Perhaps. But players sometimes disregard even most expert coaching from sidelines. You have the afternoon to consider it. Thank you so much. That's all I wanted to know. Stick around and enjoy yourself. She's even got the nerve to sit in a box. Why don't we go in there and make the cops arrest her? Well, that's a box reserved for the foreign diplomatic corps. The police can't butt in there. I told you that. As long as she's with that big shot, she's protected by his diplomatic immunity. Oh, you'd find some reason to stall out of it. All right, have it your way, then. Oh, Betty, you shouldn't be like that. A fellow doesn't want to be put on the spot by his girl all the time. She's right over there by that center arch. Thanks. Mr. Lee Chan, I have a message for your father. He's on the south side of the stadium in a box. Will you take me to him, please? Sure. Now, you fix things up with Dick. I'll see you later. Let's go, my man. Drive us around the south entrance. OK. No, let's walk. It's quicker. Dick! Dick! Get going. Dick! Chan, the ceremonies are almost over. What is your answer? Only one possible for amateur. Device will be returned to United States War Department. Thank you so much for a very enjoyable afternoon. It was a pleasure. Let me go, you idiot! Mr. Chan, Lee has been kidnapped. Lee? You have our deepest sympathy, Mr. Chan. If we can be of service, please call on us. Come in, please. There is no news yet. If the boy's in Berlin, we'll find him. A dragnet is closing in on every known criminal hideout. Don't give up hope. Ancient Chinese philosophers say, hope is sunshine which illuminates darkest part. If you wish news of your son, be in your same seat in the Olympic Stadium tomorrow, alone and unguarded. 
Eleven more hours of anxious waiting. Don't fear, Mr. Chan. Tomorrow they'll walk into a trap. The police will be there and make short work of them. No. Instructions very explicit. Must walk path alone. and this part of the stadium is covered. Good. There goes Dick. You take him in the pole vault. Oh, you've got that all set, huh? Well, if he doesn't, I'll break his neck. in box 22. The bar for the pole wall has just been raised to 14 feet 3 inches. It's rather an extraordinary request, Mr. Chan. I don't know just how to answer you. I didn't even know that you had the device in your possession. Very well. You know it now. I don't feel that I have anything to say about its disposal. I signed my rights over to Mr. Hopkins and retained only a small interest. Hopkins is a fugitive from justice. But if I have your authority to use the device, we can deal with these criminals. Are you willing to put it back in their hands, Mr. Chan? Cannot answer as officer. I must speak as very humble father. If there's no other way, of course you have my permission. Good. Please accept gratitude of most anxious parent. Besides, Mr. Carfight, when the boy is returned safely, we will go after the criminals and get it back. One more request, please. This time, must insist on acting alone. Any effort to help might result in serious consequence. You have our word, Mr. Chang. We will wait for a message from you. Goodbye. And as a further precaution for your safety, Mr. Cartwright, you will remain with me. He's here. How do you do, Mr. Chan? 
I'm glad you followed instructions this time and didn't depend on the police. Wise philosopher once say, only foolish men will not acknowledge defeat. I'm sure he was Chinese to have been so clever. Thank you so much. I'm ready to complete transaction. May now see number one, son? In just a moment. There's one more uh, formality. Ask Mr. Hopkins to come in. Yes, sir. You may put the device on the desk, Mr. Chen. That's it. Chan's signal. His transmitter's working. What does your direction finder say? North by northeast, two points east. Calling BP-41. Calling BP-41. Calling BP-41. Coming in. Carter 7 picked it up. North by northeast. North by northeast. <laughs> two points east. Two points east. Contact all cars and areas D and F for check on direction. Calling all cars, areas, DNF. Pardon our caution, Mr. Chan. But Mr. Hopkins will have to identify the mechanism just to be sure there hasn't been another uh, mistake. Yes, this is the card right invention. Thank you, Mr. Hopkins. That's all. And now, my son, please. Bring the boy in. Yes, sir. Car 46 reporting second triangulation point. West by southwest. West by southwest. Six points south. Six points south. Car 49 reporting third point. South by southeast. South by southeast. One point south. One point south. Notify all cars to converge on area D. Block 21. That definitely sets your location. Your plans work perfectly. Exactly. Soon we will be there and you'll have your device back. Calling all cars. All right, Sergeant. Go ahead. I'm sorry I got you into this, Pop. Danger. Like red light on end the moving train, now safely passed. Except for one slight detail. I must make very certain that the pursuit ends here. I'll remember you when my plane is crossing the border out of Germany. Goodbye, Mr. Chan. Just a moment, Sraka. Were you planning to leave? Get their guns. Line up over there. All of you. Just a minute. Give me that bag. Still playing tricks. Hey, eh, Mr. Chan? What is it? It's a phony. It's a transmitter. Chan signal stopped coming through. Then they've discovered the trick. Call the other cars, see if they have contact. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Very clever, Mr. Chan. In touch with the police ever since you've been here. Come on. Where is it? And talk fast. All cars have lost contact. And instruct them to proceed in the same direction at full speed. We must get to Chan. Calling all cars. For the last time, where is the Cartwright invention? Reposing in place of utmost safety. Get away from that kid. Back against the wall, you. Do I get my answer? It's the police. Surround the house. Don't let any of them get away. Chen, you see, we have arrived in time. 
The police of Berlin are very efficient. Inspector! Inspector Strasser! Keep him covered. Most unfortunate occurrence. He's still alive. Remove him. Get the doctor. If Mr. Hopkins regain consciousness, report immediately. Okay, Pop. What happened in here? I was going by the door when I heard a shot. As I stepped in, Hopkins was lying on the floor and Hughes was standing over him. You can't pin that shooting on me. I just came in through that door when I... One moment, please. You did not come into room when shot fired? No, I stopped at the door. Strange. Ink spilled here when Mr. Hopkins fall. Yet stain your shoe while standing at door. Conclusive proof you were close to Mr. Hopkins when he fell. Now very evident, attempted murder of Hopkins was last act to save self. You are murderer of mechanic Miller in Honolulu and thief of own invention. That's ridiculous. I've helped you in every way possible. If I wanted to steal the invention, I could have easily made a copy of it. That would have been obvious way and easy to trace. But you saw opportunity to gain large fortune without sharing with your partner, Mr. Hopkins. So devised clever scheme to remove suspicion from self by having Miller murder pilot Edwards and steal Robert from test plane. Then, assisted by Miss Rowland, you murder Miller and turn the vice over to Miss Rowland for delivery to Mr. Zaraka, head of foreign spy ring. Second point, when Miss Rowland disappeared before boat reached dock, quite evident, someone warned her of plan for capture. Hopkins knew the plan as well as I did. He could have... Excuse, please. Mr. Hopkins, entirely innocent. Here tonight, he performed heroic deed when, at risk of his own life, he identified imitation as real device to assist Charlie Chan in rounding up Ring of Spies. And now, final evidence. The time he disappeared from hotel room, found something you overlooked. Unfinished cablegram, written in Mr. Hopkins' own hand, addressed to United States War Department. Have recovered Cartwright invention. Returning to America immediately for... That's where it ends. Observe, please, what follows. There's nothing but a blot across the page. Indicate when writing message, Mr. Hopkins suddenly interrupted by action which caused pen to slip from fingers. Pop, Mr. Hopkins is still unconscious, but he's going to be all right. And say, the doctor found a bump on the back of his head that must have been made a couple of days ago. Thank you so much for corroboration. Prove you knocked Mr. Hopkins unconscious then drop him from window into arms of Confederates, as seen by Sun Lee. That is all. Take him out. Well, it looks like we cleaned this case up, Pop. But how did you change the robot into a transmitter? Constructed same in most efficient Berlin police laboratory, with the help of honorable inspector. You're a fine officer, Mr. Chan. You went through with your duty, even though it meant risking your son's life. Better for Oriental to lose life than to lose face. You bet. But you know, for a while, I was afraid I wouldn't be there to win that 100-meter swim tomorrow. Perhaps good idea not to accept gold medal until race is won. <laughs> Don't worry, Pop. I learned to sprint when you used to chase me through the water with a paddle. <laughs> Prepared for emergency. <laughs> <laughs>